Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, something different this time. Um, looking at a retro uh, power supply here, I guess you could call it. Uh, it's seen better days, it's pretty scratched up and stuff. It's been in the uh, loft and storage desk. I've got two of these, um, I've got two of these at an auction many, many years ago, probably about 20 odd years ago. Um, one of them um, I always used as my main um, power supply, bench power supply when testing various things and you know you can see it's one of these ones it's only got a single output so just looking at the front here you can see there's two different ranges you've got 30 volt half an amp or 15 volts up to one amp so yeah it's not a particularly beefy power supply but it's uh, you know it's adjustable it's a far now inter interestingly enough i never noticed that before uh, you've got a fine adjustment there as well now the first thing i noticed is the indicator wasn't coming on there at all i checked the back neither of the fuses were in there there's one for the you know the import primary and then the output side uh, i think it's like a five amp on the input for the you know the main transformer and one amp on the output and neither of them were there so put the fuses in powered it up nothing check the fuses again fuses are okay so it's not popping fuses um, just no indication so I put my meter on here and the, the, the needle wasn't doing very much either but I put my meter on the uh, contacts here I was getting like 0.2 of a volt if I put it on maximum reduce it down and it goes down to zero so there's very little coming out of this now all I've done is literally just take the lid off um, and it was like this you know obviously that was connected uh, this connector here Oop, sorry I've got to be careful this is all floating around um, this connector here was going up into there like that, that's okay. But the, these two wires were just floating. And you can see that, these two black wires here. Those go to the power indicator on the base of there, so if I zoom in a little bit. Um, yeah, they were just floating. So um, now it, it's certainly possible that this has been, you know, it's had a fault, someone's had a quick look in there, they've disconnected these from somewhere, never got around to fixing it, and it's just been left. Um, all the components seem to be there, there's nothing missing. Um, the other thing that I spotted very quickly as soon as I saw this cap, uh, I might have to move it around a little bit just so you can see it. It looks shattered. It looks, you know, it's, that's the telltale signs with those kind of um, components when they go. You know, I don't know if you can see here, we've got some splits cracked. I can feel it with my finger there actually. It's cracked down this side here, 0 0.01 microfarad. Um, and obviously, some old Philips um, electrolytics, that'd be a good idea to swap that one out there. Um, and there's one up here as well so um, I don't think there's one there actually is that one microfarad 160 volts by the looks things uh, there that yellow one looks like it yeah one microfarad 160 volts so there's a few caps on there that uh, need swapping out um, probably and the Phillips they probably they probably aren't actually the cause of the problem here um, what is the cause of the problem? I haven't got a clue at this stage. I've done some basic checks with my meter, testing these diodes. I've got the bridge, what looks like the bridge here on the mains input. That's all okay. Um, I just need to follow it through really and work out um, where it's, uh, I've not checked that diode yet, where it's losing power. Um, and there's a few resistors, beefy resistors around here I'll need to check. Um, but it's a bit awkward the fact that the mains uh, indicator is not on at the moment you know um, so you don't know when it's is it actually getting any power on the um, you know the output of the bridge I don't know I can do some measurements and things there in a minute um, so I guess my next poor call is trying to understand where these wires have come from they've come off something somewhere I don't know where there's no signs of it having broken off or detached on the underside of this PCB um, you know there's no remnants of the position there, the solder position. I don't know. I don't know where the hell they've come from. Um, clearly it's got to go somewhere. Um, but anyway, yeah, I need to talk about that cap. So I'll have to look for something there for a replacement. But this indicator here, I figured maybe it was uh, just a bulb. Um, now I measured on my meter continuity in this open circuit. I'm just wondering actually if it's an LED. So let's just check that. If I put my meter in shot here. Um, so it's on continuity. Uh, well, if it is an LED and get these around the right way, it'll indicate, but I suspect it's not. I suspect it's um, a bulb. Sorry, it was me just shorting the probes together there. Oh, God, it's not easy to do because of the way the wire's bent. Yeah, it's just nothing. Let's try it the other way around. Yeah, nothing. So I think that's a bulb, but I think that's blown. That's what I, I think. It's a case of how do I get that out of here? I don't know. Not sure how this comes out. I'll investigate further. So I'm just looking at one of the transistors underneath here. 
and I think that's collector and base we've got a short well a very low resistance 0.3 ohms or something there um, that's this component here uh, it's marked B324 I think uh, maybe it's a 1SB or 2SB um, I don't know but there's a Zener also here sorry camera as usual I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit there's a Zener that is clearly toasted um, I'll just get you a better angle hopefully you can see this Sorry, I zoom back a little bit. There we go. Yeah, Z3 here. That is toasted. But you can see it's a funny colour. Uh, if I zoom in, you know, if I look really closely through the, the magnifier here, um, yeah, that's, that's definitely gone. Maybe that's given the short here, I don't know. I need to see how that's uh, wired up. Um, so, one of the problems I'm going to have is working out what size, you know, what type of zener to put in there. Um, I'm not sure. I can source replacement transistor. Um, might need to see if I can find some schematics for this power supply. I think the odds are pretty slim, to be honest. Well, that bulb just pulls out. It was just a case to put some uh, pliers on there like that, just on the edge, and it just popped straight out there. So uh, I can have a look at that bulb. I I'm pretty sure it's gone. Um, it might be the resistor that's gone, but anyway, we'll uh, have a look at that. And I can probably replace it with something similar, um, a similar part. So, um, looking at the diagram here, I found, uh, it's not exactly the same diagram, it's for uh, the Mark II, um, now I think that was like a dual um, power output unit or something, I don't know, I'm not entirely sure what the difference between the two are. Um, I've circled a couple of components here, now there, there are some differences, this has only got three transistors, this other one, this schematic here has got six on it, um, but the parts do correspond, I followed on the diagram, you know, um, Connectivity between some of the components in the Zener, Z, the, the one that's gone, Z3, apparently is a 5V1, you know, 5.1 volts um, rated, and it connects to that transistor that's failed, and that, that's exactly what I'm seeing in terms of the circuit, you know, on the, physically on the board there. So the part numbers might, you know, the actual part sizings might not be exactly the same, but um, I think we're in the right. I think we're probably all right because it, it is it's the same, almost the same power supply. It's just got this extra transistor. Uh, sections up here, not sure why. Um, so I think I'm going to go with a uh, stab in the dark and just go with a 5V1 um, on that transistor there. I'll remove the old one but it says it's a BC182 so I'll compare that to what's actually on there and see maybe, maybe it's an equivalent, I'm not sure. Um, or the one of those as well. Uh, I'm going to get 160 microfarad um, one, uh, sorry, 160 volt, one microfarad cap. Swap out one of the ones on the board there, a 47, 63 volt. Swap that out. Um, I think there's another one as well, 150 microfarad, 63 volt. Um, that's just on the DC output, so it doesn't need to be 100 microfarad. I can make it a bit more, maybe a 220 or something like that if I can't get one or a 180. Um, so I think those five components. Oh, sorry, and finally, that's that component there, that cap, which I believe is a 0.1 microfarad 630 volts um, and I think I think that's worth showing where the bulb is indicated I'm not sure it's a it's like a capacitor inside a circle and you can see that I think that's the bulb because it's on the uh, other side of these switches here and it's across so it's AC coming in I think I think that's what that's indicating so that would suggest to me that um, those wires um, you know wondering where they went it looks like it's the contact there on switch on the switch you know SW1 and S, uh, SW1A uh, and SW1B um, could go on the underside as well if it's easier you know because you know, if you think about it the location of that being positioned there uh, would make sense to just go underneath here um, you know obviously with not big strands of wire like that I'll have to mount that carefully um, but yeah so I'll order all the parts now um, and I'll report back in a minute once they've all arrived so this is just an update a few days later, you can see I swapped out the one microfarad cap there, um, swapped out the Zener um, Z3, um, I've removed the transistor there, so I've got some components here to stick in there, so I've got um, 630 volt uh, 100 nanofarad cap um, to put down here. Um, I think the only thing I haven't got, I still haven't got an electrolytic to replace that and that one, but I should be able to test it without those for the moment. Um, they're probably alright to be fair, but I just want to replace them because they're pretty, you know, they're aged, they're pretty old. It's like very early 80s, like 81 or 82, this power supply I'm sure. 
Um, so I've got the transistor in there. I've got some new, um, some of these new bulbs as well. You can see the little neon bulbs, and they look pretty much exactly the same size as the original one. So I've got the replacement cap there. I've got the replacement neon um, fitted. I've connected it to the two switch positions underneath where these two black wires go here. Um, I tested continuity when it's on. Um, these two are joined up like that. So I'm guessing, um, and because there was a strand of solder, you can see actually it looks a bit of a mess. I've not cleaned that up. I think that's where it was originally soldered. I think the cable came across the top side and soldered onto that. Um, presumably that's st st stuck usually stuck down onto there so I might reattach that later I don't know yet um, and I might do something underneath just to isolate these because I wouldn't want them coming off and connecting to something on the board there um, but this is just to test it really so I'll just reassemble it all now I think uh, you know connect, connect this piece back up here it just slides in um, so that the connect you know the connector there slides into that piece um, there's a ground to connect to the casing and this part goes um, under here you can only get it one way um, power it up I think well stand back is it going to blow well it's powering up I'm not sure it's working What is interesting is the core seems to be working this needle go the wrong way. I'm wondering if the needle's been connected up the wrong the wrong way in terms of polarity there. Thinking about this now, I think that's that's probably the case. Someone's had the board out of this. So I think what we'll do, we'll connect the power up here. Um I'll see if we can get this on shot. Yeah, it's not gonna be easy. Um well not so you can see the screen and the display at the same time you might just be able to just about see that I think um, so if I switch it on and we'll adjust the voltage up a little bit there you go one and a half five six so yeah we're going up the range pretty well here actually 15 so that must be on the 15 volt range switch it on to the other range I think yeah we're up to just under 30 volts there um, those caps will probably help if I just turn that down a bit Right down to zero, back up to almost 30. I would say that's probably working. I just think the um, I think the connections in here are reversed. It's going the wrong way. It's trying to go left instead of right. So lucky for me, these are crimped, so I can just literally slide them off, swap them around. So there we go. That's working fine now. Um, I need a bit of calibration, I'm not sure. You know, because you see it's like on the zero volts there, but it's not quite on zero volts. As you move it up to the full 30 volts, it's just a bit shy of the 30 volts. So, yeah, I might need to um, have a look at the service manual for this, see if I can work out what adjustment. Oh, hang on, the fine, there's the fine as well. Yeah, I forgot about that. So, as you move the fine, yeah, you still can't get right down to zero, uh, sorry, um, but you can get right up to 30 with the fine adjust. So, uh, I think the other final thing I'm going to do with this now, obviously, is you know, other than clean it up and reassemble it, I'll get some um, switch contact cleaner into all the switches and things and into these uh, pots. Um, but yeah, just clean it all up, reassemble it, and um, I'll do some testing. God, this is filthy. It is. Just look at that. It's just come off the top. I mean, the thing is, this has been in uh, the loft for mm, 15 to 20 years. Um, this particular one um, and I think prior to that it had been in storage for a few years it's got a pat test sticker um, on the underneath oh, sorry on one side of it that I think is 95 um, which would probably be about right it was probably just after that time I picked this up it might be 97 or 98 um, what was it before that it, maybe it says 91 on it I don't know or 92 it, it, yeah, that, it would have to be before that because I moved on to another job um, before 95, well before 95, it was like 94 I think, um, and I picked this up at the end of that job, this has been decommissioned um, in advance of that, so it must be 92, um, but I think these things were 
manufacturing around the very early 80s. Uh, you can see there, uh, just about, I don't know if you could be able to read that, I can barely read it. It looks like 95, but there's no way that's 95. Um, I think that's 91. I picked this up um, th three or four years before 95, I'm sure, so that would tie in with that. Um, it might be 93 I picked it up, that would, that's would that got to be a 91, it can't be 95. Um, and it's got a number 11 on, which was about right, because the, the lab that this belonged to, they had something like 20 of these, um, and they had 20 of the Hameg 60 MHz oscilloscopes I picked up as well. Well, I didn't pick up 20, they had 20, I picked one of those up. Um, it was thanks to my uh, old boss, Dave, um, there that I managed to, you know, he, he put aside some decent equipment for me, and these power supplies were... Um, a couple of the things he gave me. Uh, I don't, th don't think I paid for these. Um, I think he gave me, gave me one that was faulty and one that worked. I said, uh, "Here, this will, one, one of them works fine. You know, the other one will be a repair for you at some point." I just never got around to it. Um, and as I got this out of the loft the other week, I thought this was the working one. Clearly, you know, it's not. This is the one that uh, wasn't working. So I've got another one of these in the loft somewhere. Uh, I don't know where. It's definitely up there. Almost done now. I've cleaned up these banana. I think the banana plug, banana plug connectors here. Um, by you know wheeling them out, um, getting some WD-40 on, just scrunching around there. And there's loads of grey oxidisation to come off those, and they look really shiny now. Uh, you might not be able to tell, but they are uh, dead shiny. So I can zoom. Uh, there we go. Um, they're a bit torn up. I could always replace those with some really nice uh, you know gold plated connectors or something at some point if I wanted to. It's not a particularly accurate power supply anyway, so that's any point really. Um, can I screw that back in now? What's going on there? That's it. Yeah, it's a bit of a funny, funny fitting. Um, and then also clean the inside there where, where you plug your banana things in as well. Um, but the front's all been cleaned up, the case has been cleaned up. Just putting the uh, handle back on. And I just thought to show you, I've been uh, cleaning these up with a bit of metal polish. And you can see, I'll show you the difference. Look at the, the one I've not cleaned versus the one that has been cleaned. Um, yeah, it makes a big difference. So, uh, final finishing steps, I guess, you know, uh, just presentation wise. Um, it's you know it's even though this is clean now it doesn't look that clean it's just the paint's a bit worn you know you can see it's a bit battered on the sides and things um, but uh, yeah you know front of it is pretty good really all things considered uh, might try and get that mark off there in a minute I'm not sure I might end up rubbing the ink off if I'm not careful so and I think there's a calibration thing there I think that's what that is that you can adjust the, the needle um, I'll perhaps just show you that in a minute um, as I give it its final test. Um, but yeah, it's looking pretty good really. I'm quite pleased with that There we go. So we're at zero volts. I'm just going to adjust this the needle if I can here just very carefully uh, Yeah, it gives an interesting smell this thing when it's heating up. I'm not sure if it's the transformer um, You know, it's that aged electronic smell you can smell just like warm warming up not not burning um, but you can see that you know I've uh, zero, zero the needle there. Um, if we increase it, that's the 15 volt range, bang on the middle of the range there, switch up to 30. Um, it doesn't quite reach the top end of the 30. Um, with a fine adjust, yeah it does. Look at that, that's not bad that, 30.23. Um, we go all the way down to the bottom there, um, use the fine adjust, right down to 0 0.72. So yeah, all in all that's uh, turned out really well. So here are the components I've replaced on this particular unit. Uh, I'll show you that cap um, so you can have a close up. Can you see it's just absolutely shot, it's cracked and stuff. You can see a uh, split here, look at that. Um, so I'm not, not entirely sure how that's happened because that goes I think between the ground and the earth contact. So uh, yeah, uh, answers down below if you understand more about what might have caused that to go when it's been connected you know, between ground and earth. Uh, it's rated 630 volt that, so something nasty has happened to that, unless it's just the way that these old ones fail, I honestly don't know, it's out of my realms of knowledge. Um, so I thought I'll just test one or two of these, well the three, I'll test the three electrolytics I've taken off here. Um, I'm assuming this is electrolytic, it looks like it's got a, an indicator here, it's one microfarad, so we'll stick it in the meter, uh, put it on two microfarads. Um, I have drained this to make sure there's not 160 volts still in it. Um, let's see what we get. Yeah, that's not far off. I'll probably keep that. It's probably all right. Uh, it's an old vintage cap anyway. It'd be probably a bit uh, bad to throw that away if there's nothing wrong with it. So we'll keep that. Um, these two, um, I'm not so sure about. Uh, I think certainly one of them might be questionable. 
um, let's have a look, I think this is the 47 yeah, so that's a 47 now, yeah, the tolerance on these things back in the day was well out uh, you know, but I'd still, 64 microfarads there versus 47 that it should be that, yeah, in my mind I'm glad I've replaced that even though it's probably alright, and you can actually see, can you see the, the plastic film on it um, is split, I don't know how well that's uh, coming out there there's a split all around like that's got hot and it's uh, expanded um, so this one's the 150 microfarad, I did swap this out for 220 actually this is just across the, uh, you know, across the plus 5 to ground, uh, not plus 5, the power out and ground, it's just a, a bit of a, a smooth smoothing cap I think on the output stage, 150 microfarad, that's spot on so that's actually quite a good um, good cap that, I'll keep that um, I need to check the ESR of it but it's uh, it's also got the split in it, you can see that it's also got the, um, the the plastic film just split in there, but I mean that could just be the way that um, you know the, the film's been manufactured and stuck onto those. Um, I don't think this one will read. Well, this one, yeah, I think it might do. This one might read on my meter. Let's give it a try. Uh, yeah, 140 nanofarads, I think. So it's still measuring all right. Oh, we've got to uh, get that stuck in the meter then. It's still measuring all right, but yeah, I wouldn't trust that. Would you trust that? I certainly wouldn't. Uh, and then in terms of faultly components, we've got a neon here, which, um, uh, you know, I was under the impression you could measure these, but I don't think you can. You get an ohm circuit anyway, um, by the looks of things. I certainly couldn't measure anything on a new one, um, unless I'm missing something somewhere. Um, so I think this neon had failed, that, hence why it'd been, I think it'd been actually swapped out. I think someone nicked the neon off this working unit and just swapped it over. I think that's why that was disconnected. Um, the Zener had been cooked. Uh, now, once I heated this with the soldering iron, some of the stuff that was on it actually came off. But if you look at it closely, you can see it's discoloured and it's it's got a little crack in it. So I think that, but it doesn't measure as a short. So that Zener, yeah, something wrong with that. Questionable. It might work with it in. I, just, I put a beefier one in anyway. It's still a 5V1, but I think it'll probably handle twice as much current at least. Um, and then the uh, transistor here. There's a BC. 182 I think it is and that's there's a short there between collector and base so ultimately that was the main fault with this probably that Zener as well those two combined because they're on the same part of the circuit there so I've got the final few caps in there now I've had to mount this one a bit of an unusual orientation there um, but it's clear you know it's clear of the chassis underneath on the can um, and we've got good connections there uh, and on the top side I've got the 47 uh, microfarad cap I've swapped out there as well so one thing I didn't show here is the test of the main transistor as well. Um, you've got to take this heat sink off with the three screws, um, and then there's three more screws, and you can get the whole thing, the whole heat sink actually comes off the main unit, and you can get to the back of the three connections, the base collector and emitter there on that transistor. I think it's a FET. Um, uh, I've not got the schematics to hand. I think it's a FET transistor. It probably will be, um, and that's used for the main, like say, the main output. Um, if that was faulty, you know, you'd uh, you'd be blowing fuses probably, or just not outputting anything at all. So there we go, it's the final test just doing here. Um, before I swapped out the, the final two capacitors, um, this well in particular the 47, um, there was a bit of voltage creep there. You know, you left it on a few minutes, it just creeped down a tiny, 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 tiny touch. Whereas now it seems pretty solid, to be honest. You set it at a voltage and it stays there. Um, so I'll leave this on for a period of time. I'm gonna do some load testing on this later. Um, I'll perhaps get, I've got some, wire wound resistor somewhere I could just I'll set a voltage calculate the uh, current there based on the size of the resistor you know perhaps draw half an amp or something or a quarter of an amp I need to check on the size of the uh, you know the wattage of the resistor in terms of what it'll actually burn off um, and I'll just leave leave it you know I'll keep checking on it but I'll just leave it running for an hour or so under load just to make sure it doesn't uh, pop I wouldn't pull an amp um, even though it will go up to I think an amp um, that's like a you know a maximum. You could perhaps pull about 0.9 of an amp or something like that for a period of time, and I'm sure it'll probably be all right with it. There's probably well there will be some overload protect you know protection, short circuit protection built in. And I think actually looking at the schematics, I'm not 100% certain, but I think it's probably that realm of the circuit that's failed here, the overvolt you know the uh, the short circuit protection there. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, I could be wrong. Um, Anyway, uh, I thought you'd find that interesting. Thanks for watching. See you soon.